and in this video we continue looking at the articles based on the Retted and Range Rover murders and the people involved. These articles looking at the possible link between the murders and the death of Leah Betts. Murder drugs men linked to Leah death. Three men found dead on a Range Rover in a gangland style murder were today revealed to be Essex Barons suspected of providing the drug to tragic Leah Betts. Patrick Tate, Anthony Tucker and Craig Rolfe were shot in the head at point blank range after apparently being lured to a remote farm track near the village of Retterdon in Essex, possibly to discuss a drugs deal. Their bodies were found in a blood splattered seven year old metallic blue Range Rover early yesterday on a snowy track four miles from Leah's home in Latchington outside Chelmsford. Murder squad detectives said all were known criminals and police sources today confirmed they'd been involved in ecstasy dealing in local nightclubs like Raquel's Basildon where Leah bought a fatal ecstasy pill on her 18th birthday last month. Tate 37 from Basildon was known as a hardened criminal who punched his way out of court seven years ago as he was due to stand trial on robbery and drug possession charges. 18 stone tattoo dealer escaped from Bellericke Crown Court on the back of a Honda motorbike. He was later caught in Gibraltar and extradited to Britain. Two policemen and a policewoman were injured as Tate faced the court charge with robbery and possessing cocaine. It also emerged today that Craig Rolf, 26 of Chafford 100 Greys, was a convicted robber whose father was convicted of killing his mother at their Bellericke home in 1978. Tucker, 38 from Fob in Essex, was a friend and minder to boxer Nigel Benn, who was today said by his manager to be devastated by his death. Tony was part of all Nigel's big fight nights and became firm friends with Nigel, he said. He used to be on the team of us on the day of the fight and lead Nigel into the ring as a form of standard bearer. Nigel got on so well with him he even invited him to his training camp in Tenerife. The bodies were discovered at 8am yesterday by farmer Peter Fearbold and his friend Ken Jiggins, on the way to feed their fence on the remote snow tree line track running across bleak open farmland. Shotgun cartridges were found scattered in the snow. Detective Chief Superintendent Ivan Dibley said he believed the men were shot in their car and the killer would have escaped in a vehicle of his own. I don't know if we're looking for one perpetrator or two, he added. Whoever has killed three people clearly is a very dangerous man. To that extent, until such time we catch him, I am concerned tears at large. Extra police officers were today drafted in as the hunt was stepped up. Mr Jiggins, a 44-year-old builder, told how he stumbled across the car on the lonely track known as Workhouse Lane. It is known as a favourite rendezvous point for criminals and in the summer for courting couples. Three shot dead in drug trap blown away. Three men were executed in a gangland ambush yesterday just two miles from a huge drugs drop. Each had been blasted in the head with a shotgun as they sat in a metallic blue Range Rover. The trio, unable to turn round in the narrow lane, were trapped like rats when the killer opened fire through the windows of the vehicle. One of the victims was a former bodyguard of boxer Nigel Ben called Tony Tucker. Hardman Tucker was gunned down with two associates after being lured to what detectives believed was a drugs deal down a lonely farm track used by courting couples. Known cocaine dealer Patrick Tate, 38, was also found dead in the blood splattered Range Rover with third man Craig Rolfe who also had form for robbery. Powerfully built Tate from Essex once staged a daring great escape style motorbike getaway from a court after appearing in the dock on drug charges. As police searched for clues, footprints and tyre marks in the foreign snow, they were looking at links with a £1 million cannabis haul in and around the nearby pond seven weeks ago. Detectives believe the drugs could have been part of a big shipment lost as it was dropped from a low flying plane or it may have been left by a bungling gang who forgot which pond they hid it in. The track where the blood-soaked Range Rover was discovered in Essex early yesterday led to an isolated fishing lake owned by farmer Peter Fearbold of Whitehouse Farm. It was discovered by Mr Fearbold and farmhand Ken Jiggins. The cannabis was found scattered at nearby Tainfield Tye in West Hanningfield. Farmer Jan Hashtrap who found it said he believed the drugs were linked to the killings. Dutch-born Mr Hatchtrap said, First of all, we found a little parcel of drugs when we were doing some hedges. I put it on the fire. Then we found another piece the size of a video cassette in my pond. Police later recovered a staggering 53 packets of cannabis wrapped in black plastic packets and weighing £336. Divers found a further 19 packets. One cop said, We'd never seen anything like this before. It's remarkable. Police are trying to discover if the killings were connected to a shooting some days ago 
near a little chef calf where the three men were seen running away. The bodies in the Range Rover were found just 300 yards from the busy A130 Chelmsford South End Road at Retted in Essex. The near side front window had been shot out. Two bodies were in the front of the vehicle and one was in the back. Detective Superintendent Ivan Dibley said there were no signs of a struggle, suggesting they were surprised by the cold bloody killers. He added, It looks as if they were enticed down there, or they may have been arranged to be down there. And he added, These three men are known to us as criminals. They are understood to all come from Essex. The Range Rover had to stop at a five-bar gate which was locked on the other side as there were fields leading to a trout pond, Mr Dibby said. The wounds are consistent with wounds from a shotgun. He added, There is quite a lot of blood contained in the vehicle. Mr Dibley said at least one shotgun was used and the majority of the force was contained inside the vehicle. The conditions of the body suggested they had been killed on Wednesday night or early yesterday. All three had been shot through the head. And he added, Whoever killed these three people are clearly very dangerous and to that extent I am concerned they are at large. Police who sealed off the area after the bodies were found were carrying out a careful search of the area looking for clues. Post-mortem examinations are due to be carried out today. The killers chose the perfect spot. Viewed from the air yesterday it became clear the murder scene was carefully picked out. The Range Rover used in the executions was parked at the only place shrouded by trees on the remote farm track. After the shootings the killers simply had to walk the 200 yards back down the lane to jump into a getaway car waiting on the busy A130. Yesterday, forensic experts were conducting an inch by inch search of the track looking for the killer's footprints frozen in the ice. Whoever shot the men probably walked past Whitehouse Farm, which borders the track and the A130. The farm is now the centre of police activity. Eight squad cars and a white painted police incident caravan were parked in the yard. A team of six police officers can be seen carrying out the gruesome task of examining the area immediately around the Range Rover, which was left near a gate which blocks the track. Officers were picking through six inches of snow and mud looking for cartridges from the shotgun. Fragments of glass from a window shattered by the gun blast was also being recovered in the hope they may have some clue to the identity of the gunmen. Police believe they could have been injured by flying glass and could have left traces of blood. Three shot dead in Lear E Wars. Three drug dealers were found shot dead yesterday as the Lear Betts ecstasy tragedy flared into a gang war. The trio, Tony Tucker, Craig Rolfe and Patrick Tate were blasted in the head with a sawn off shotgun as they sat in a Range Rover on a lonely farm track in Essex. They are known to have sold ecstasy in the South End nightclub where 18 year old Lear's fatal £10 tablet was brought and they are believed to have become victims of a hitman hired for a ruthless gangland double cross. Tucker was minder to world champion British boxer Nigel Benn, one of the team who walked the Dark Destroyer to the ring before his fights. The fighter was left devastated by his pal's death. Rolf and Tate were convicted robbers. Detectives believed the three, all from the Basildon area, walked into a deadly ambush. Their blood-spattered bodies were discovered by a farm worker on the main A130 road between Chelmsford and Basildon. An Essex CID source said last night these murders are a direct result of Leah's death but few tears will be shed over these three characters. They were criminal scum who could not care less if youngsters like Leah lived or died. Since her tragic death we have been putting huge pressure on dealers in Southend and Basildon. Informants have been talking, people have been grassed and we have made some good arrests. The dead trio have made tens of thousands of pounds recently from pushing E. They've been supplying a network of smaller dealers. College student Leah went into a coma and died after taking a single ecstasy tablet during her 18th birthday party. As she lay dying in her parents' arms, Leah whispered the name of the dealer who supplied the tablet. Now, I'm going to have to comment on the last part of the article where it mentions that Leah whispered the name of her dealer to her parents as she lay dying in their arms. Now, I think we're meant to believe that she whispered the name of Tony Tucker to her father, Paul Betts. But I find it hard to believe that Leah would have known that the ecstasy tablet would have come from Tony Tucker considering she didn't actually buy it as she was barred from Raquel's at the time. A school friend bought it in Raquel's from Mark Murray and passed it on to Leah at her 18th birthday party. Now unless of course she mentioned the name of Mark Murray to her father but it's highly unlikely that a friend who bought the pill in Raquel's would have known the name of the dealer that he bought it from. I think this is just a good case of an example of the media making things up to enhance the story 
of the three deceased. Drugs link in gangland executions. Three men found executed in an apparent gangland attack as they sat in a Range Rover in a remote country lane in Essex are believed to be local drug barons who supplied a network of nightclubs in the area. It emerged last night. The men who lived within 30 miles of the scene may have supplied the club where teenager Leah Betts is thought to have purchased the ecstasy tablet that led to her death last month. Police believe they were either lured to the farm lane at Retterdon near Chelmsford to discuss a drugs deal and then ambushed or they were forced to drive at gunpoint before being shot in the back of the heads. They were named last night as Craig Rolfe, age 26 of Greys, Patrick Tate, aged 37 of Basildon and Anthony Tucker, 38 of Fobbin. They were killed with at least one shotgun and possibly a revolver. Police last night refused to confirm reports that the three victims were involved in a turf feud over drugs. Local sources said, however, they are all known to the police. The suggestion is they were quite high up in the local drug scene. They were more senior than drug pushers. They may well have been the ones that supplied the nightclub where Leah Betts went. Leah of Lachington, Essex collapsed five hours after she took an ecstasy tablet at her 18th birthday party. She is believed to have brought the drug at Raquel's nightclub in Basildon. Detective Superintendent Ivan Dibley, leading the investigation, said there is no real sign in the vehicle of a struggle or an attempt by any one of the men to get out. That tends to suggest they were either surprised or whoever committed the crime was in the vehicle with them. No weapon has been recovered, although several shotgun cartridges were found at the scene. Forensic examination was continuing last night with the body still in the F-registered metallic blue Range Rover. 250 yards from the A130 Chums for the South End Road. Paula Lannis, a Home Office pathologist, checked the victims at the scene and will carry out full post-mortem examinations today. The lane part of White House Farm is used by courting couples and fishermen going to a nearby carp pond. It is known to the criminal fraternity. A delivery driver was abandoned there after a gang hijacked his lorry load of cigarettes six years ago. An empty, stolen safe was once dumped there and several burnt-out cars have been left in the lane. Peter Fearbold, aged 42, owner of the farm, discovered the bodies with his friend Ken Jiggins, aged 47, a bricklayer of nearby South Wooden Ferris. They were driving to feed their pheasants, kept for shooting parties, when they came across the Range Rover parked in front of a locked gate. Mr Jiggins went to ask the driver to move to let them pass. He said later, it looked like they were asleep. And it was only when we looked more closely we realised they'd been shot in the head. There were no footprints or tyre tracks in the snow and there was no frost on the vehicle, possibly indicating that it had not been there long. The dead driver's head was to one side. The front passengers lolled forward and the man in the back was laying flat on the seat. Oh.